log of my current project at university. It's basically we have to make a management simulator, or like such as Rollercoast Tycoon, something like that. Um, but for my group, we're doing a fish tank simulator where you buy fish, sell fish, let them grow up, and then feed them and look after them generally. Um, it's my job in the group to make the AI. And I've done this by basically creating a room full of path nodes and telling my fish where to go. Now, in a bit more detail, the fish itself has an array of navigational points here, which I have to manually go through each navigational point and add in. Now, this is a bit of a pain because if we wanted 12 fish, that's 25 by 12, which is a massive amount of effort and we don't want to create the fish like that and move them in, that would just be a stupid way of doing it. But if we jump into the game, basically the fish will run through a few functions and it will go through path nodes and it will just swim through. At the moment it's only got eight path nodes going, which are the bottom, bottom row of the 3x3x3 three by three by three grid of path nodes. Oops, I'm drowning. And it'll just float between them and whatever. Now, if I was to add a new fish in, like so, and play again, this fish will just sit here and it won't move and it'll eventually float to the bottom. Sit still. There you go, you can see it floating. So that's bad. If I now, if I delete this fish, and if I was to create a new one, by copying it and play, they'll they'll both happily go off and do whatever they like and swim between the nodes. Oh, this is this is this is a major problem because if I want to do this dynamically, like spawn the fish and when you press a button, like press number seven and you spawn fish type seven into the tank, then you can come up with some major problems where the fish might not have path nodes. Or you could do it another way where you have a set tank hidden from the game and when you press 7 you just pull fish number 7, uh, array member 2 and put them in the tank. But it's that, that's not what we want to do because that's just F a lot of hassle to be honest. But at the moment basically each, each fish has an array of navigational points and you can access it from the editor because of this double brackets here. And when the fish is created it checks if it's got a controller and if it doesn't it'll spawn an AI class and set the pawn and set pawn is in the fish AI um, it sets up a few variables it then possesses the fish pawn with this AI and then takes navigational points from the fish and puts it into the AI. Now the interesting bit comes now because it's got two states. Basically the first state is idle and this is just a precautionary measure in case it ever gets stuck but it doesn't actually do anything at the moment because it should never get stuck. But the following path basically chooses a random number and assigns this to actual node. An actual node is going to be the next path node which you're going to travel to. It then sets move target to be the navigation point of in the array which corresponds to the random number which is actual node. So it could be my navigational point square brackets 3 for example. It then calls the function move toward which moves the fish towards that target of move target. And once it reaches its destination it does a similar thing um, chooses a new node and then moves to that one. And at the end here we've got a sleep interval just to make the fish look more real where when it reaches a node it has uh, it could wait for three seconds or just continue on going. But as you can see the fish will work quite happily the way they are but this is no good for what I need in the, well for them to do. So I'm going to work your way around this and post another video with a solution to what I found. Uh, if you have any questions 
about the AI or any general questions about UDK I'll be happy to answer them if you just pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can really. Thanks for watching and um, that's it, cheers.